Toby is a tram engine. He is short and sturdy. He has cow catchers and side plates. And he doesn't look like a steam engine at all. He takes trucks from farms and factories to the main line and the big engines take them to London and elsewhere. His tram line runs along roads, as for fields and villages. Toby rings his bell cheerfully to everyone he meets. He has a coach called Henrietta, who is seen at her days. Toby is attached to Henrietta and always takes her with him as he says. Well, you never know. She might come in useful. One day, a car stopped close by and a little boy jumped out and called to his sister, Come on, Bridget! Come on, Bridget! Come on! And together, they ran across to Toby. Two ladies and a stout gentleman followed. The gentleman looked important, but nice. The children ran back. Oh, come on, Grandfather! Oh, come, Grandfather! Do look at this engine! The stout gentleman said, well, 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 that's a tram engine, Stephen, a tram engine. Is it electric? Hoosh! This is Toby. Shh, shh, said her brother. You've offended him. But trams are electric, aren't they? They are mostly, but this is a steam tram. Oh, may we go in it, Grandfather? Oh, please, may we go in, please. Oh, very well. All right. And the stout gentleman and his family went for a ride to the junction. There, they waited for Toby to take them back to their car. And the stout gentleman said to Toby, By the way, um, what is your name, hmm? Oh, uh, uh, Toby, sir. Oh, Toby, is it? Well, um, thank you, Toby. Thank you very much for a very nice ride. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you very much indeed, sir. And Toby said to himself, now, this gentleman is a gentleman who knows how to speak to engines. The children came every day for the fort. Sometimes they rode with the guard, sometimes in empty trucks, and on the last day of all, the driver invited them into his cab. All were sorry when they had to go away. Stephen and Bridget said, Thank you, thank you very much indeed. To Toby, his driver, his fireman, and the guard. The stout gentleman gave them all a present. And Toby said, Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, don't forget, come again soon. Oh, we will, we will. Goodbye! 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 And they waved until Toby was out of sight. The months passed. Toby had very few trucks and fewer passengers. And Toby's driver said to him, Well, this is our last day, Toby. The manager says we must close tomorrow.
Toby. <laughs> Very sadly. Toy Shed. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. And he went off unhappily to sleep. Next morning, the shed doors were flung open and Toby woke with a start to see his fireman dancing a jig outside. The driver was very excited and waving a piece of paper. Wake up, Toby, me boy. Wake up and listen to this. It's a letter from the stout gentleman. Toby listened. There is a line to a quarry at the end of Thomas's branch. It goes for some distance along the road. Thomas was always very careful here. One morning, there was no one on the road policeman was sitting on the grass close to the line. He was shaking a stone from his boot. Thomas liked policemen. He had been a great friend of the constable who used to live in the village but had just retired. Thomas expected that the new constable would be friendly too and he called out to him. The policeman jumped and dropped his boot. He scrambled up and hopped round on one leg till he was facing Thomas. Thomas was sorry to see that he didn't look friendly at all. He was red in the face and very cross and he was wobbling about trying to keep his balance. And he said to Thomas, It's disgraceful. It's disgraceful. That's what it is. I didn't sleep a week last night, it was so quiet, and now a blinking engine comes whistling suddenly right behind me. My first day in the country too. Huh. Wish I'd never been transferred. And he picked up his boot and hopped over to Thomas. Thomas said, Well, I'm very sorry, sir. I only said good morning. The policeman grunted and leaning against Thomas's buffer, he put his boot on and then he drew himself up and pointed to Thomas. Aha! Aha! Where's your cow catcher then, eh? Where's your cow catcher, huh? Oh, please sir, I don't catch cows, sir. 
Don't you try to be funny with me, young fella, me lad. Now, let's see. And he took out his notebook and he looked at Thomas's wheels. Side plates either. No side plates and no cow catcher. Engines going on public roads must have their wheels covered and a cow catcher in front. And you haven't. <laughs> and so you are dangerous to the public. So there. Thomas's driver said, Oh, look, that's rubbish, Constable. We've been along here hundreds of times and never had an accident. Oh, have you? Then that makes it worse, don't it? I'll just have to make a note of that. Hmm. A regular lawbreaker. That's what you are. A regular lawbreaker. I shall report this. The fat controller was having breakfast when the telephone rang. Oh, bother that telephone. And he said to his wife, I'll be back in a minute, oh dear, 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 dear. But when he came back, he said, Oh, bother, bother. I'm sorry, my dear, but uh, Thomas is in trouble with the police. I must go down at once. The policeman was waiting at the station. The fat controller spoke to him at once, and a crowd collected. Other policemen came to see what was happening, and the fat controller argued with them too, but it was no good. The policeman said that the law is the law, and that's that and all about it. The fat controller felt exhausted. He mopped his face and said to Thomas's driver, I'm sorry, driver. <laughs> Oh dear, it's no use arguing with policemen. We will have to make one of those cow catcher things for Thomas, I suppose. Thomas was horrified. Everyone will laugh, sir. They'll say that I look like a tram. Eh? Hey, what? Like a tram? <laughs> Why? Yes. Well done, Thomas. Why didn't I think of that before? We want a tram engine. Now, when I was on my holiday, I met a nice little engine called Toby. Now, he hasn't enough work to do and needs a change. I'll write to his controller at once. And the fat controller said to him, Well done, Toby, that's a good engine. I see you brought Henrietta with you. Oh, you, you don't mind, sir, do you? But the station master wanted to use her as a hen house. And that would never do, sir, would it? Oh, no, indeed it wouldn't. <laughs> we couldn't allow that.
Toby made the trucks behave even better than Thomas did. At first, Thomas was jealous, but he was so pleased when Toby rang his bell and made the policeman jump that they have been firm friends ever since. Toby and Henrietta take the workmen to the quarry every morning. Dirty objects. Ugh, what dirty objects. At last, Toby lost his patience. Um, uh, James, why are you red then? Hmm? I'm a splendid engine, you see, ready for anything. You never see my paint dirty. Oh no. Oh, that's why you once needed bootlaces to be ready, I suppose. Hmm? James went redder than ever and snorted off. end of the line, James left his coaches and got ready for his next train. It was a slow goods, stopping at every station to pick up and set down trucks. James hated slow goods trains, 
They're dirty tracks from dirty sidings were. I hate them. I hate them, I do anyway. Starting with only a few tracks, he picked up more and more tracks at each station till he had a long train. At first, the trucks behaved well, but James bumped them so crossly that they determined to pay him out. Presently, rumbling over the viaduct, they approached the top of Gordon's Hill. Heavy goods trains halt here to pin down their brakes. James had had an accident with trucks before and should have remembered this. His driver called to him, Wait, James, wait, wait! But James wouldn't wait. He was too busy thinking what he would say to Toby when they next met. All too late, he saw where he was and he tried to stop. James was frightened. I've got to stop! I've got to stop! I've got to stop! I've got to stop! And setting his brakes, he managed to check the truck's mad rush, but they were still going much too fast to stop in time. Through the station they thundered and lurched into the yard. and something sticky splashed all over him. He had run into two tar wagons and was black from smoke box to cab. James was more dirty than hurt, but the tar wagons and some of the trucks were all to pieces. The breakdown train was in the yard and they soon tidied up the mess. Toby and Percy were sent for help and came as quickly as they could. And Toby said to Percy, Um, look here, Percy. Whatever is that dirty object there? 
any idea? Oh, uh, that's James, Toby. Didn't you know? No, uh, it's James's shape, all right. But James is a splendid red engine. And you never see his paint dirty, do you? Never James dirty, eh? James shut his eyes and pretended he hadn't heard. They cleared away the unheard tracks and helped James home. Controller was there to meet them. Well done, Percy. Well done, Toby. And now you, Jane. Oh, really? Fancy letting your trucks run away like that. I'm surprised. You're not fit to be seen. You must be cleaned at once. And Toby shall have a coat of paint. Uh, chocolate and blue, I think. Oh, thank you, sir. And please, sir. Can Henrietta have a coat of paint too? Certainly, Toby, certainly. She should be brown, like Annie and Clarabelle. Oh, thank you, sir. She will be pleased. coaches grumbled and were feeling so full. We're feeling so full. We're feeling so full. We're feeling so full. Thomas looked at the hill ahead. Can I do it? Can I do it? Suddenly, he saw a handkerchief waving from a cottage window. He felt better at once. Yes, I can. Oh, yes, I can. Oh, yes, I can. Thomas's driver said to him, That was Mrs. Kindly who waved to you, Thomas. She has to stay in bed all day. Oh, has she? Oh, poor lady. I am sorry for her. I am sorry. Engines have heavy loads, but Thomas and Toby didn't mind the hard work when they saw Mrs. Kindly Wavy. But then, it began to rain. It rained for days and days. Thomas didn't like it. Mrs. Kindly couldn't wave on wet days. But whether she waved or not, they always whistled when they passed the little lonely cottage. Its white walls stood out against the dark background of the hills.
then, one day, Thomas's fireman said, Hello, look at that. The driver came across the cab. Ah, something's gone wrong there. And there, hanging, flapping and bedraggled from a window of Mrs. Kindly's cottage was something that looked like a large red flag. Mrs. Kindly needs help, I expect. Let's stop, Thomas. And he put on the brakes and Thomas gently stopped. The guard came squelching through the rain and mud up to Thomas's cab and the driver pointed to the flag. See if there's a doctor on the train and ask him to go to the cottage, then walk back to the station and tell him that we stop. The fireman went to see if the line was clear in front. Two passengers left the train and climbed to the cottage. Then the fireman returned and the driver said, well, I think we'll back down to the station so that Thomas can get a good start. But the fireman said, huh, we shan't get up that hill. Come and see what's happened. They walked along the line, round the bend, and the driver said, Whoa! Go back to the train. I'm going to the cottage. He found the doctor with Mrs. Kindly. Are you all right, Mrs. Kindly? Oh, yes, thank you. It was silly of me to faint, wasn't it? But you saw the red dressing gown hanging out of the window, didn't you? Are you all safe? Oh, yes, thank you, ma'am. I've just come to thank you. You know what, Doctor? There's a landslide in the cutting. Mrs. Kindly saw it from the window, and she stopped us. She saved our lives. God bless you, ma'am. And the driver went back to the train. They cleared the line and the sun shone as a special train puffed up from the junction. First came Toby, then Thomas with Annie and Clarabelle, and last of all, but very pleased at being allowed to come, was Henrietta. The fat controller was there, and lots of other people who wanted to say thank you to Mrs. Kindly. Engines whistled and called out when they reached the cottage. The people got out and climbed to the cottage. Thomas and Toby wished they could go too. Mrs. Kindly's husband met them at the door. The fat controller, Thomas's driver, fireman and guard went upstairs to give her some presents. Mrs. Kindly was very pleased. Oh, you're very good to me. Very good indeed. And the fat controller said, uh, <coughs> uh, <coughs> uh, The uh, passengers and I hope that you will accept these tickets for the South Coast, Mrs. Kindly, and get really well in the sunshine. <coughs> we cannot thank you enough for preventing an accident, a nasty accident. <laughs> now, I hope we've not tired you. Goodbye.
stable train A little twin engine, Toby is his name His quaint and old-fashioned, but careful and wise His coach is Henrietta, and she's seen better days His man keeps returning to the good old days When they were busy working every day But nobody went with them now they can't understand why things have changed Their line is closing down today forever Toby, oh Toby What will become of you? The world's much nicer That you can do Boys, but always We still care about you All of the children came to say goodbye They clapped and cheered as Toby Winged his well bye-bye Everyone was sad to see Please come and help right away Now the point of his family